Hello, and welcome to Dr. Voices, where doctors come to teach and where patients come to learn. Today we're going to talk about the set joints in the low back and why they can hurt. I'm very fortunate to have one of my mentors, Dr. Mike Sane, here with us today. Dr. Sane uh, earned his medical degree from the University of Maryland. He completed his internship at Georgetown University, and then he went on to complete a residency in physical medicine and rehab at Harvard Medical School. Lastly, he's done a, a fellowship in interventional pain medicine at UCSD Medical Center. Uh, so first, Dr. Sane, would you mind uh, explaining what exactly the facet joints are and why they can be painful? Thank you, Jonathan. So the facet joints are paired joints on each side at every level where the vertebrae meet. You can think of them as where the vertebrae communicate with each other. These are the joints that are responsible for allowing us to bend, extend, twist, and rotate our spine. Great. Now let's take a closer look at the spine model. So on our spine model, you can see that here are the paired facet joints on either side. And just like any joint, when there's movement, over time there can be wear and tear, which we call arthritis. Now Dr. saying, what type of pain pattern is usually associated with facet joints? That's an excellent question, John. If you wouldn't mind turning around, I'll, I'll demonstrate where okay, great. we typically see pain. So if we imagine this is the lumbar spine, we typically see pain on both sides in either area, but that pain can also refer down into the buttock, down into the leg as well. Okay, and I'm just saying, would you mind talking about some of the benefits of rehabilitation, exercise, and core strength for this type of pain? Well, excellent point. Oftentimes to treat this pain, we start, first start with physical therapy. And the idea is to strengthen the core muscles, the abdomen, and the low back muscles in order to provide scaffolding for those joints. So there's not as much pressure, and that can help reduce the pain. I'd understand, would you mind uh, going over some of the common medications that we use uh, to help augment the rehabilitation process in facet joint pain? Oftentimes we use certain medications to help reduce the pain, particularly to help reduce pain from inflammation. Mm -hmm. The most common of these would belong to a class called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs as they're commonly called. Typical versions of this include ibuprofen and naproxen. One of the drawbacks, however, that we've learned is these medications come with their side effects mm -hmm. and their risks. So I worry about patients taking these medications for prolonged periods of time. Mm -hmm. However, for brief courses, it can be helpful. Now, we're actually going to have a whole other video detailing the medial branch block and radiofrequency ablation procedure. But I'm just saying, just for this video, would you mind briefly going over what these two procedures are and how they can sometimes help in this type of pain? So the medial branch nerves are nerves that sit right in this region and they supply pain information from the joints into the spine and then up to the brain. So to diagnose facet joint pain, oftentimes we'll block these nerves with a local anesthetic, something like lidocaine, just like what the dentist uses to, to numb your gums. Right, right, yeah, yeah. And that's helpful for diagnosing facet pain. It can also help relieve the pain. Mm -hmm. If that's not enough, because we know those anesthetics are short-lived, oftentimes we'll go to a second procedure called radiofrequency ablation. And that uses a special needle, the heated tip, and we can actually ablate that nerve or cauterize it so it no longer sends pain and stimulus into the brain. Now, Dr. Sane, would you mind next uh, going over some of the red flags that patients should be wary of uh, that might alert them to need to call their physicians or potentially even go to the ER. Jonathan, well, we always worry about progressive weakness, numbness, or tingling, as these can be signs of a neurological condition, and that would be an emergency. In addition, we also worry about signs of infection, such as fever or rashes. Well, thank you so much for that, Dr. Sane. That was fantastic. I also want to thank all of you guys for watching. When you have a chance, uh, make sure to hit subscribe and also visit us on the web at drvoices.com. Um, you know, there's a lot of healthcare information out on, on the web right now, and it's very difficult to know uh, who to trust and where you can trust. Uh, Dr. Voices is very different in that it's a resource completely created by physicians and other healthcare professionals. Um, if you're a physician, you know, we're calling for submissions right now. We would love to hear your voice. Uh, if you're a patient, come check out the website, come and learn. We built this resource just for you. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.